Hello, I'm Simon Jones from HitFilm.com and today I'm going to be taking a look at a technique for creating glowing lights on a 3D model. There's various ways to do this depending on how the model is set up and the particular effect that you're going for. In an earlier tutorial we showed how to use the emissive colour property to create running lights on a helicopter. This time round I'm going to show you how to create more dramatic lights even when the model doesn't have multiple material slots. For this particular example, I'm going to be using the UFO from the HitFilm 2 trailer. We got it from TurboSquid, it's a great model, but it is quite expensive. However, the techniques that I'm going to be covering do apply to pretty much any model you might be using. So here we are with a new project in HitFilm 2 Ultimate, and I'm going to go to the Import menu and choose 3D Model. Here's our UFO model, which I will now open up and bring into the program. This will appear in the 3D Model Properties window, ready to be set up. You can see here it comes in untextured, uh, some models have materials associated with them, this particular one doesn't, so we'll set it up manually. First though, in the groups, I want to find group 55. This is the particular group where the running lights are held, and by setting this to an animation group, it means that I can animate the running lights separately to the rest of the model at a later point in this tutorial. You can see the red section here is the element which will be animated separately. Okay, so I've ticked that and I'll rename it to something a bit more friendly. Then we'll head over to the materials property to set up some textures. You can see we only have one material here. So let's bring in a diffuse texture which will just give the surface a bit more detail. Okay, let's bring in a specular texture as well. This will just control some of the shininess so that rather than being a giant shiny object it will be a little bit more textured. Okay, I'm going to change the colour slightly, just darken it down, maybe give it a slightly red tint. Uh, as you can see, that shininess is way too much, so let's just adjust that a little bit so we still have some nice highlights, but not quite as crazy as it started off at. I think that's about right, and uh, I'll just boost up the diffuse and specular reflectivity as well, although in this particular tutorial, I probably won't be making much use of it. And that model is pretty much ready to be used in a composite shot. So let's just hit create and then that will appear in our media panel. Firstly, I'm just going to rename it to UFO body so we can keep track of what's what. And then I'm going to go into the menu and duplicate it. Okay, I'm just going to rename this as well. And then if you click the small grey cog, you can reopen the properties. And we're going to edit these so that we can use this particular duplicate for the lights rather than for the main body of the UFO. Okay, so let's open up those material properties again. And I'm just going to get rid of both of these textures by clicking the red X. OK, so we now have that untextured model ready to go. And let's bring in the light map texture. So you can see this has a very different look, and we now have these nice ringed lights around the, uh, the inner section there. Let's just go in and change that colour back to white. You can see that just makes sure that the lights are nice and bright as they should be. And we don't want this specular highlight thing going on, so let's just change that to black. And we can just drop the alpha down as well. That ensures that there's going to be no highlights appearing on this particular version of the model. I'm going to take down the reflectivity settings and you can see that all we have left are the actual lights from the texture. And as we move around you can see that they're still getting occluded in the background so when they go behind the raised section in the middle of the UFO you can't see the lights anymore. Just to make this a bit more obvious as to what's happening let's increase the specular reflectivity so that we can actually see the surface again because this is a really important part of this particular technique. And so as I increase the specular reflectivity, you can see that the entire shape of the UFO is still there. It's just that we can't see it, because it's just entirely black. The only visible part are the lights. But because the shape is still there, those lights are still obscured by the rest of the shape. It looks invisible here because it's on black, but the whole shape is still there. Okay, so we now have these two different assets which we can use in a comp. So I'm going to create a new composite shot, and I'll drop in, to begin with, the UFO body. And there we have it, ready to go. Now this doesn't look particularly exciting, so let's just add a few bits and pieces to make it look a bit prettier. So we'll just move in, and then I'll just turn off the perspective grid so we can get a better view. And the first thing to do is to add a light. That just makes things look a little bit more dramatic. You can see the light is just up here. We can move this around, position it somewhere that looks a little bit better. I'll just go into the light properties, turn on cast shadows, and then go into the UFO body as well and turn on cast shadows in its material properties. You can see that model is now casting shadows onto itself. Nice self-shadowing built in there, very easy to use and very quick. You can move that light around, move the UFO around and it's going to update accordingly. I might actually go and change this light to directional light. 
uh, provides a slightly different effect rather than emanating from a single point it's emanating in a uh, straight line from a particular direction but the benefit of this is that it just performs slightly faster so unless you have a particular need for a point light a directional light can often yield very similar results but at a much faster rendering speed okay let's adjust a few properties in the ufo body itself so under ambient occlusion, let's turn that on. I'll just boost up the samples a bit to give a higher resolution result. You can see that ambient occlusion just giving a bit of extra shading into the detailed areas. And that looks pretty good. You can see that we can move this around and the shadows and the lighting will update in real time nice and easy. This isn't running on a particularly fast machine either. Okay, so I'm just going to reset the transform properties so this UFO body is back where it began. And then in the media panel, I'm going to take the UFO lights and drop that onto the timeline on a layer above the UFO body. You need to make sure this goes in as a separate layer, don't add it to the UFO body layer. Okay, you want two layers, one of which is the body, one of which is the lights. So I'm going to parent the lights to the body, and that means that as we move the body around, the lights will stay exactly attached and in place. But the most important thing is to go to the layer properties and change the blend mode of the UFO lights. So I'm going to switch this to add. And suddenly we can see our body again, but the lights are still visible. What I've done here is the add blend mode has removed the black and just kept the bright areas. This is exactly the same technique you might use if you were compositing a stock footage explosion, like something from Action Essentials. Same thing, except we're doing it live with 3D models. Now I'm going to go in here and turn off some of the lighting options for the light layer. Okay, so you can see as I turn off these two options here that the light layer becomes much more visible. And that's because we don't actually want the lights to be affected by the actual 3D light in the scene because the lights emanating from the UFO shouldn't be affected by shadows or by lights in the scene. You can see here that as we rotate around, whilst the UFO itself becomes gradually in shadow and dark, the lights are still very visible. Whereas if we turn on illuminated, you can see the lights are also affected by the 3D lighting in the scene. And similarly, if we turn on shadows, you can see the shadowing affecting the lights. So we'll turn both of those off and then we have this nice, clean UFO lights layer. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And because we parented the UFO lights, we can now rotate and move around the UFO body and those lights will stay in place. You can see that as the UFO goes into shadow, the lights stay nice and bright. But because this is a completely separate layer, we now have all the control we would normally have as if we were compositing normal 2D layers in HitFilm. So for example, we can drop on a glow effect. Let's just change this to add and we'll maybe drop the threshold down so that the whole thing gets affected and you can see that we now have some nice glowing lights and uh, maybe i'll duplicate this glow layer to create a more extreme version boost up the radius a bit and that creates a really nice soft lighting effect and you can combine any number of effects like this just like you would any other layer in the program so maybe just add on some light streaks we'll change the blend mode here to add as well and uh, drop that threshold down slightly and then we get this kind of slightly nice anamorphic streaking going on. And you can see how you can build up really interesting effects. I mean I'm using this to create glowing lights but you could use this layered approach to do all sorts of interesting things to 3D models. It's very very powerful. And as we talked about earlier because we separated out the lights as a separate animation element we can now come in and just rotate these lights around if we so wanted. And because all the glows and the streaks are put on procedurally, as this rotates around, they update realistically as the lights go in and out of the different spokes and become increasingly visible or not visible. You can even go in and maybe keyframe some of this. So we'll just keyframe the Y rotation and then move forward a few frames, put in a, a few rotational amounts. So we've now got a nicely rotating light ring. And then if you turn on motion blur for the light layer, it will behave exactly as you expect. So if we actually draw these two keyframes a little closer together, you'll get more motion blur streaking going on, and uh, yeah, you start to get towards a really nice kind of close encounters of the third kind kind of lighting effects going on here. Okay, so that about wraps it up for the glowing lights, but as a little bonus at the end of this tutorial, I think what we should probably do is just do a really quick look at how to create a 3D star field, because to be honest, this UFO is not complete without a cool star field. Am I right? Okay. So there's various ways you can do this, but one of the neatest ways in HitFilm 2 Ultimate is to actually use the particle simulator to create your own procedural star field. Okay, so to show you this, first of all, I'm just going to drop on a completely new particle simulator onto the timeline. Okay, so once that's on there, I'm actually going to turn off the two UFO layers for a moment, just so we can see our nice particle effect. 
And you can see here the particles are actually being affected by the light. So just like we did with the UFO lights earlier, I'm going to turn off the illuminated option in the particles materials options. And then in the emitter, we're now going to go into the emitter options and change the shape to a sphere. You can see currently the sphere is tiny, so let's ramp that up to something crazy like 10,000. Okay, you can't really see it at the moment, but this sphere is now wrapping the entire 3D scene. Okay, I've turned on the boundary option, that means that the particles will only appear on the outside of that sphere. In particle system, let's just drop the speed down to zero so we, the particles aren't moving because we don't want our stars to be wiggling around. In the general properties, I'm going to keyframe the active property so that no new particles are spawned during the shot. And in time shift, I'll just go minus 10. That means that the particles start spawning 10 seconds before the start of the layer. Check out one of our earlier tutorials for more details on what I'm doing there. In the life, let's just boost it up to 60 seconds so that our particles don't disappear halfway through the shot, because that would also be extremely strange. And then in the movement variation options, I'm going to add a little bit of variance to the scale. This means that each star is going to be slightly different in size. Uh, and we want more stars, so let's just go up to 200 particles per second. Okay, that's looking like a pretty good star field, and you can see that we can now rotate around our spaceship in full 3D, and those stars will behave exactly as expected. And into this you can add suns and other lens flares and all sorts of bits and pieces, knowing that you're always going to have that cool background. Hope this is useful. Uh, bringing 3D models to life through additional layers and effects such as these glows can be really, really powerful. Now, I've used it for a UFO, but you could also use it for the lights on a building or maybe the lights of an airplane flying at night, all kinds of things. So thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. We've got more tutorials coming up all the time and I will see you on the next one.